Good morning, Standard 6 class, and welcome to Environmental Science class. My name is Wabaluga Seilitzo, and I'll be your tutor for the day. So let's start from the top. What is science, and why do we study science? Science has been defined in the past levels that you've done as everything around us. What am I talking about? Living creatures consisting of animals and plants, non-living items, your stones, your rivers, and anything of the like. So why do we study science in the first place? Well, we study science to understand it, to understand what is happening around us and why it is happening around us. So let us note some of the things that science has done for us. These are referred to as innovation. Innovation which refers to coming up with new ideas. So what are some of the notable scientific innovations that have happened in the past? Well, let's start from the top. We have the telephone. The telephone which was invented 200 years ago by a man called Alexander Graham Bell. The telephone enabled for voice-to-voice -voice communication to be done from distances across the world. We also have pasteurization. Pasteurization which allows us to sterilize liquids, milk and any other fluid in order to sustain its shelf life and make it proof of bacteria. We also have the watch which helps us and tells us the time. The watch was um, invented by a man called Abraham Lewis Paralet in, in the 1700s. We also have electricity, which of current is something that we all depend on. Electricity helps us, it lights up our lamps, it lights up our televisions, we use it to cook and we use it for other things. And then let's also talk about some of the notable people that helped to yield to some of these innovations that are currently taking place. Those people are called scientists. Scientists see the world from a different angle compared to us. Who are some of these scientists? We have, well, for status, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison is the man that invented the incandescent lamp. The very lamp that has led to the innovation of the bulbs that we now use in our houses. We also have Alexander Graham Bell, as previously mentioned, who helped in the invention of the telephone. We have Marie Curie who helped in the discovery of radioactivity. We have Albert Einstein, who led to the discovery of quantum physics. We have Isaac, New Isaac Newton, who led to the discovery and understanding of gravity as a force that helps keep things on the ground. Let us now go on to a more key invention that has been found, which is the wheel, how the wheel was invented. Well, history says that the wheel was first used in early Mesopotamia. Early Mesopotamia, which is now known as Egypt. It was used in the pottery business, where people would use it to turn clay and form it into different items, such as jars, such as bowls, canisters, and the like. The invention was later on taken up by the Greeks, who extended it in order to make cards and axles of different types. Through that, we now have cars, cars that rather are driven on wheels. There is also one thing that we need to note, and those are the careers that can come through in science. What can science help you become if you were to study it? Well, you can become a chemist, a chemist that is there studying various substances. You can become a geologist studying the earth. You can become a physicist who studies matter and different types. You can become a doctor. You can become an engineer, depending on the type of engineering form that you choose. There's also one thing that we have to note, and those are the gender issues that are surrounding science as a field of study. In the olden days, science was only limited to men. It was something that only men could study and something that only men could pursue. Well, of current times have changed. Now women are allowed to pursue science at a different spectrum, to see things that are that differently. That's why we have pioneering women such as Marie Curie, who studied radioactivity with her husband. We have women that have went up to space, women that have become astronauts. We now have plenty of women becoming doctors, women becoming engineers of various capacities. So let's move on to explain the invention of the wheel, as I said. What we have 
have here is an axle. What we have here is an earlier version of the wheel. So axles, as we will describe, were mostly used in the industry. Used in industries to drive various machines and various tools that were made at the time. The wheels were later on reinvented to produce wheels that could actually be used on carts and on cars. Here is an example of a wheel. With an axle, as you can see, the gears are rather more sharper, the surrounding part of the wheel. Here we have a smoother version which allows the wheel to travel with less friction. So, how is the wheel currently used? Well, we use wheels in the agricultural industry with our tractors. We use the wheel to drive our cars to various workplaces. It is still very much used in the poultry industry and in the world at large. So here is where we will end our class for today. In the next class, we'll pursue science at a greater angle, where we'll now be talking about the environment around us. Because science is about studying the environment and the different things that happen in the environment around us. Have a good day.